Welcome back to Chris's Takeaway. Today we're doing heirloom recipes, which are much loved recipes which have been passed down from generation to generation. I'm joined by Philippe Petruno, who is the chef at Una at One Rochester. Philippe is French, but he comes from a Spanish and Italian heritage. So I thought he was perfect for today. And Philippe, maybe you can tell us why you've chosen this dish. Today I chose an octopus dish that my grandmother used to do. Uh, it's a Galician way with some sherry, some tomato, uh, some jamon. Let's get started. Yeah, no problem. So just a little bit of olive oil and garlic. Start roasting my paletilla. Okay, so after a few minutes, you just drop your onion inside. I, I choose shallots, the baby shallots, and I just uh, roast them before. The next ingredient you're going to use uh, is the tomatoes. So the next ingredient is a uh, uh, fresh uh, tomato sauce. We made it. Uh, this one is a dry sherry. So you just want to cover your tomato like this. I'm just slicing the peckier peppers. You want to add them to, the, to your pot. Okay, so the next thing is the octopus. So this one has just been uh, in boiling water for 45 minutes. And after 45 minutes, we leave it inside the pot until the water cools down completely. You want to cut them in a, in a kind of an angle following the sucker there. So you just want to lay your octopus down. At this point, you want to re reduce your fire to a bubbling, simmering type of um, heat. Okay, next uh, part of the recipe, we're just going to add the stock. The stock, it's... Um, and rich uh, fish stock with lobster, so it's quite thick. Last ingredient of our dish is uh, potato. So you just want to boil them beforehand and you just want to crush them, but leave them in big chunk. Just maybe realize, but I didn't put any salt or pepper at the, mm -hmm. uh, in that dish because when you roast the paletilla, the paletilla is yeah. so salty, normally just enough. Right, right. So now what you want to do, just cover your pot. So after 25 minutes, uh, you just take your lid off. Now it's nearly ready. The last touch will be uh, uh, to bring an extra color and also vibrance to your dish. So we use some uh, olives, um, pimientos de padron. So you just want to slice your pimientos de padron, sprinkle them around. And just before you serve, you just want to add some flat parsley. So that's it. That's the Noxtopux stew from Galicia. The last thing to do is to taste. And I don't think you need salt, just the paletilla itself, and that's it. Wow, that's, that's amazing. amazing. Thanks so much, Philippe, for doing no that. Problem. As a kid, I always remember my mum's baking, those incredible smells coming from the kitchen. And this passed down recipe is extremely simple, uh, rhubarb and apple cake. Rhubarb is quite an astringent sour fruit, always needs to be uh, cooked. So the first thing I'm gonna do is chop the rhubarb. I'm gonna peel and chop the apples. So three apples, uh, 285 grams of rhubarb, and then I add 105 grams of sugar. Just mix all of these together just to coat the apples and the rhubarb. I've melted 77 grams of sugar, let it cool down, and then added one egg. Just stir those together, just gently with a whisk. 143 grams of chopped pecan nuts, 105 grams of plain flour, and then half a teaspoon each of mixed spice, cinnamon, and baking soda. I then add my fruit together with the sugar, add the melted butter together with the one egg, and then just bind all of these together. Once they're all well stirred together, we just transfer to a springform tin. This is a nine inch springform tin. So I've preheated the oven to 180 degrees centigrade, put the cake in the oven. It will take approximately 45 minutes. Okay, so I just checked the, the cake with a small knife. The knife comes out clean, so it means the cake is ready. I've allowed my cake to completely cool down. Then I just release the springform and it just will come out very easily like that. I take my knife and then just carefully lift the cake off the base. What I'm gonna do is just transfer the cake onto my stand here. To finish off my cake, I'm gonna make a rhubarb cream. What I do is I take the rhubarb, about 400 grams, and then macerate that with 180 grams of brown sugar. Bake it in the oven for 20 minutes at 180 degrees. What I do is just put the puree into a bowl and then just take some thickened cream. Slowly add the thickened cream. And now I'm gonna decorate the cake with this delicious rhubarb cream. Now I take some whole pecan halves and then just place the pecan halves around the edge. 
Mum's apple and rhubarb cake looks fantastic. Nothing warms the heart more than a passed down recipe. I'll see you next time on Chris's Takeaway.